The uh, title for this one is The Work of Forming and Conforming Part 2. All right. So we're in Luke 15, and we're talking about the prodigal son, the elder son, but we're, the emphasis um, has been on much of this on the father, <coughs> um, <coughs> but particularly their relationship to the father. I want to get a little more into um, the prodigal son. I'll be sharing some things I've shared before, but trying to bring out certain truths that will, I don't know, that will make things less informational and more, oh my God, I need Jesus. <laughs> Luke, uh, Luke 15. We will read uh, verse 11 and 12, and then 18 and 19. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And then verse 18 and 19, and this is after the hog pen. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thine hired servants. <clears throat> there is <clears throat> there is an understanding of our God. Therefore, you could say that there is an understanding of our Father and of our life, which is called Jesus, that has to do with um, greatness or the lack of greatness. It is built into human nature to want to be great. Just watch a little bit of TV. American Idol, there's a new one called The Four, The Battle for uh, Superstardom or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and um, the, the emphasis of these things is, and they're popular because the emphasis of these things speaks to stuff in us. And when I say us, human nature. Um, um, for example, people working their way up the ladder to be somebody great or um, a uh, hippie sitting around saying money doesn't matter to me and a uh, big job and all this kind of stuff and somebody plays a, a song that they got from the Lord and then you feel less and so you want to go write a greater song. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't matter. You, you say, well, at least they're not, you know, like some of these big, you know, but they haven't been given the opportunity. It's just within the realm that they have any sway, they will use that to become <clears throat> greater. And I think that, I think that we, we, we have this in this story. And I, and I think that there's almost no need talking about it unless a person begins to recognize that God is just the opposite. And that, I'm going to say it again, that, that our Father is just the opposite and that Jesus is just the opposite of this in nature. Uh, we can call it lamb, we can call it anything, but we should call it more of Jesus, less of me. He must increase, I must decrease. Um, and not only that, but the second commandment is like unto it. Your neighbor must increase and I must decrease. <clears throat> and so... You have that, in, and as I said, I've, I've alluded to these portions in these verses many times in years past, but I'm trying to bring it home somewhat because my heart is not to know him, but, you know, you could say know him in the biblical sense, and that means come into oneness instead of a bunch of information. I mean... I was thinking about it on the way here, and I was thinking, you know, 
uh, the disciples said, to, you know, Jesus was praying, and the disciples said to Jesus, teach us to pray, teach us to pray. See, that's so us right there. That is so us. Because it is, that was a good prayer, better than the Pharisees, teach us, you know, teach us good stuff. When in reality, and so Jesus says, okay, when you pray, Pray like this. Is that really going to make a difference? Pray like this. Unless there's a complete understanding of what those things mean and, and not understanding them in the realm of our lives, but in the realm of his life, the way that God has been, the way that God thinks, the way God lives. Um, and since we can't get to that realm, we're either outside of him asking him for something or we're inside of him trusting him for the life of it. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully it's, you know, we're trusting that. <clears throat> um, anybody ever, you know, been just sitting around and all of a sudden it just came on you and you started praying for somebody or stuff, you know? and. You know, and if somebody said, if somebody walked by and saw you praying, they said, wow, you're a real prayer warrior. And you would go, no, that's the first time I've prayed in two years. <laughs> you know. And, uh, but the point is, is that what comes out of us comes by life because we haven't been joined to a dead religion we've been joined to a person. We've been made, we've been made something. And so that's why he says, the younger of them said, Father, give me. And then verse 18, I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I've sinned between, uh, against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me, make me. Give me is an increase of you apart from the Father. The, 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 the true give me doesn't start happening until he comes back and says, make me like a hired servant. And then the Father, you know, when he's in that spirit, then the Father starts giving him an increase of the son instead of just being a son. Um, and so, um, but there is that thing, that, that thing must be conquered before we're ever going to understand God. And I don't mean conquered, conquered, but I mean we, we must, there must come a time, and I don't know that it's done that with too many people, come a time where it is that that mind, that way of thinking is so clear to us because it's not our thinking that I want to help my enemies, you know, succeed or whatever. Bless them. Bless those who curse you. Bless them, you know. So you hear somebody cursing you to someone else, you know, because bless those that curse you. We go, yes, I know that they do. They curse me, so I bless them. But it's another thing when you overhear somebody or someone comes and tells you, uh, here's what, what so-and-so said about you. And you go, all this stuff arises. Man, it doesn't take anything. It, it's just there. And we have no ability to bless, even if we can get into church in a spiritual environment and say, I bless them. If we see them on the road or something, whatever, you know, all this stuff comes back up. Um, so in reality, now this is, but in reality, you could say it never was there. It never was there. It's, it was there in theology or it was there in want to at a moment when the atmosphere was spiritual or, or you were not under attack, you know. Uh, I mean, it's like war. I tell you what, it's like war. 
And when you're under attack, it's completely different than when you're just marching around, a, a, you know, the, the place doing your regular duties and there are no problems. When war comes and the bullets are fired and the enemies are rushing at you and all this kind of stuff, self-preservation really kicks in. And, and it is, but the problem with that is, is that a lot of times people don't respond well. They freeze, they freak out, they get paralyzed, they, they, they hold up just long enough to not be able to withstand the enemy, you know, because it's like, I don't know what to do. I mean, you know, because I would know what to do if this was a situation where I was told what to do in a calm situation, in a calm situation. Um, and, you know, I've often said with the, the you know, we, we have the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, but the truth is our faith is not the faith of the Son of God who loves by giving himself. Our faith is a faith in Jesus that will help us either, uh, will put an invisible shield up, not us taking a shield of faith, you know, instantly and saying, I know what this is. That's just an example of our reality. And we can hear that and all even agree with that. But we have to see that that general tenor of of self, of reacting in the crisis, in the attack, in the crisis, um, is just flat not acceptable to God. It's just flat not acceptable. Why? Because he deems you unacceptable? No. No. He, that's right, and you are totally functioning. You know, it probably bugs him a little bit, and I'm being kind now. It probably bugs, bugs God a little bit that you constantly claim that you're one, or I do, that we're one with him, but in those situations, we don't act like one, and he's going, where's the one? Okay, all right. So, so, so what I'm saying is, is that I'm not saying that you need to always act like the lamb. I'm not saying that. I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what I'm trying to communicate is that somewhere, somehow, each one of us need to see the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. And I'm not talking about a revelation of him just being your life. I'm talking about the life that he is as your life, or certainly wants to be. Um, but there's not going to be any, any recognition. There will be no change. There will be no, um, uh, you know, all the prayers in the world will not fix it. Fasting won't fix it. Want to won't fix it. There has to be a pursuit. And let me tell you something. There's enough scriptures along this line that can that can just bowl you over but see we've read those scriptures we've all read them and they've never taken us and said you you need to realize that your god your father is selfless to the core so much so and your 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 life the life that is within you called jesus is selfless to the core and will give himself every time or will just get low instead of fight back to claw back up to some, you know, minuscule place that we think so important. I mean, really, it's just, it's just nothing. But it's something to us, therefore, it's worth fighting for. <laughs> and, and so... The Spirit of God, I mean, you know, we, you know, the Spirit of God is the only one who can really break this to us and reveal, you know, where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty to see the face of Jesus, and by looking into his face, we see God. And 
from that, um, you get uh, chapter four, all of it. Yeah. So you just, it's, uh, so you, you start seeing that this is your ministry. And you, you really understand that because that chapter is so precious. What, what, what was that you held up? Five, okay. All right, so the, the, the prodigal son asked for goods, and when he went out, he went out with more than he ever had, so he was greater. Can you agree with that? And that's, you know, you, for sure that's in youth, but it's in all of us. <laughs> I want to be great. I want to be known. I want to be accepted. I want to be all this kind of stuff. And, um, and it's a form of making ourselves great. That's what we want to do. We want to go out. Don't you think he went out and he was expecting to really have things turn his way? Because deep down, he truly is great. Well, no, he's not. All right, but, but when he comes back, make me like a hired servant. Don't give me, make me. And may, not just make me, but make me like a hired servant. And suddenly, in the father's eyes, he's great. Bring the, this and bring that and bring the best and da-da-da-da. You know, and he's going, what madness is this? <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> the madness is the folly of God. It is uh, the scandal of the cross that we don't know about in nature. We just can see it in the story, but we need to see it in the face. It's a big difference, you know? And so, Jesus says, he that will be greatest shall be least of all. Okay. <clears throat> all right. He that humbles himself, I'll exalt him. He that exalts himself, every time I'll bring him down. Why does this keep happening? Why doesn't anybody accept me? Why doesn't anybody you know, promote me or whatever. Why, do, why doesn't anyone, basically, why doesn't anyone recognize my greatness? Well, that's, that's really a huge part of it. We would never admit that, but that's, you know, people need to see. I could really change, the, <laughs> never mind. I could change the landscape of what's wrong. You are what's wrong. And to add you in that spirit in is to make it worse than what it was before. But everybody always knows a better way, right? I mean, every, everybody does. Every, my way is a better way, okay? Well, all the ways of man are the same no matter who's doing it or how it's being done because it's not Christ, okay? Okay. So, um, uh, gosh, I guess we're going to have to continue on this um, in the second part here because we just ran out of time. You know, let me say this. Um, one reason why we shorten these things is because I've always had a tendency to, to really dump a lot. I mean, I, it's the truth. I know it. You know it. You know, it could take some people six months to search out everything I shared on one Sunday morning or something. Um, my desire and one reason why I said okay to 20 minutes, you may think, well, don't stop. <laughs> but here's what I think now. Yes, let me stop. And let you, if nothing else, take, take five minutes to pray over something that maybe that hits you, that felt real, that felt non-religious or even non-spiritual but unaffected to me. And, 
and to communicate your heart to your Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit that I want to be brought into your fellowship. Yes. And I can't do it the way I am. I am, you know, I'm not a bad person. I'm not in sin. I'm, not, I'm just not that mind of taking the lower seat. It doesn't come easy for me. Those kind of prayers. I think, well, I think we might make a little more ground on those kind of prayers, you know. Okay, so let's take a break, and we shall have one more of these.